happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. There are rewards for following Jesus. The Bible reveals precious, life-changing treasures for those who are determined to follow Jesus. There is a certainty on which each of us can bank, and that is no matter what you give, no matter what you sacrifice, you will never outgive God. Join us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as Kim takes us on a journey through the scriptures, revealing the rewards for those who choose to follow Jesus. Hello, and thank you for joining us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries. What a pleasure it is to just spend time with you, revealing to you the things that God has placed in my heart. And tonight, what I want to talk to you about is the rewards for following Christ. And when you think about that, it brings to your mind, like, who wouldn't follow Jesus? Well, that's what we think as Christians who love the Lord and are living close to him and reaping the benefits and the favor of God. There are those who do not believe in Jesus, do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, and therefore don't understand what it is that God gives to those who believe in him. And then unfortunately, there are those people who fall somewhere in between. They claim to be Christians they claim to believe in who God is. They believe in Jesus, his son. But for some reason, they're not following the commandments of Jesus. They're not following the ways of Jesus. They're not living a life that is pleasing to Jesus. And so as we begin to think about those individuals, it's those that I'm wondering, why is it that you have tasted and seen that God is good and you would still choose not to live as God lives or as he tells us to live. And I believe the answer lies in the fact that you just don't understand the rewards. Clearly, you don't understand that God said to take up your cross and follow me. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. When Jesus saves us, we take on the resemblance of him because his blood washes away our sins and his DNA becomes part of our heart and our life. And we bear the name of Christian, which means we are followers of Jesus Christ. And when we are followers of Jesus Christ and we bear the name Christian, then there should be a resemblance to him. By the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we live, our attitude, our intentions, our heart should look like it has been redeemed and washed and transformed by Jesus Christ. So let's talk about that for a minute. If you look in the book of James and you look at chapter 4 and verse 10, he says this, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I believe that right there, is the crux of why people don't follow Jesus. They are not willing to humble themselves. They have decided that they know what's best for their lives. They've decided that no one's going to tell them what to do. They've decided that perhaps the words of Scripture are for those who do not understand how to do things on their own. They've been misled misguided, lied to, and duped by the devil. 
Because between Genesis and Revelations, we learn exactly how it is we are to live our lives. We learn exactly what God requires of those who follow him. We learn exactly that those who are born again, children of God, part of his family, redeemed by his blood, transformed by the renewing of our faith in Jesus Christ. Those are the ones who do follow him. So if you're not following the ways of the Lord, or if you're not following the commandments of Jesus, my first encouragement to you would to be check your faith and really be honest with yourself as to whether or not you have given your heart and your mind and your soul and your life to Jesus. Do you really love him? Do you trust him? Have you committed your life to him? Because that, my friend, is what eternal salvation requires. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But this gift is given in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And when you believe in something, you trust it, you love it, you follow it. It has meaning to you. So let's take a look at the scriptures and just get an understanding of what happens when you follow Jesus. What are the rewards of following Jesus? In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, he says that those who seek God are rewarded because he says that you must believe and you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And it opens up with, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. And you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards those who seek him. Those who serve the Lord and commit all that they do to him, they receive an inheritance from him. Let's look at that in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So when we serve the Lord, we receive an inheritance. We have a home not made with hands, eternal unto the heavens. We'll learn about that in a minute. We receive a reward for our labor. Our works will not burn like hay and stubble, but they'll go through the fire and they will be like precious metal, like gold. And we'll have an opportunity to collect that and hand it to him as some sort of acknowledgement of our gratitude for who he is. You also receive that inheritance, but you also receive rewards for your labor and your work for him here. And those who place their faith in Jesus will also receive eternal life. And we learned that in John chapter 3 and verse 16 that I quoted just a minute ago. If you believe, you'll have everlasting life. Those who follow God and don't walk in the accounts of the ungodly, they shall prosper. Psalms 1 verses 1 through 4 is a wonderful account of what God is saying for those who literally follow after him, who ignore those who follow the world, whose things of the world may tempt them from time to time, but they don't give in to that temptation. He says in Psalms 1, 1 through 4, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
He's going to be in the land of plenty. He's going to have the things that they need. These are the rewards of those that seek and follow after the Lord, who live in the ways that God has instructed us to. He has a plan for us to prosper you and to give you a hope. And when you follow after him and you do the ways of Jesus, then I promise you, you're going to live a life even on this side of heaven that is filled with the rewards of Jesus Christ. Those who trust in God and follow him are rewarded with God fighting their battles for them. You can read all about it in 1 Samuel 17 when little David, who wasn't at all qualified and eligible as a human being, fleshly young boy, to fight the giant, but he was chosen to face the giant. But David tells us the battle's not his, it belongs to the Lord because he understood that when you follow after the Lord, when you do what he says, when you deny this world and all of its ungodliness, when you live pure and holy, seeking after the Lord, he will fight your battles. And you look in Psalm chapter 23, verse 5, and he says he prepares a table before my enemies. You're feasting and resting in Jesus while your enemies are looking in, but they can't get past Jesus to get to you. That's what happens when you follow the ways of Jesus, when you're living in the center of his will. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, he tells us that those who are in God, those who trust God, they're given the power to defeat the devil. We know in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and following after him leads us to victory over the devil. In Psalms chapter 19, verses 7 through 10, I, I, want you, I want to read this in your hearing. Because I want you to see that those of you who are choosing not to follow God, maybe you just don't understand about these commandments. Perhaps you just haven't trusted in him enough to understand that his commandments are perfect and they're sweet and they lead you to a life that is lived in God's grace and mercy, his peace and his joy and the abundant life that he promises us to have in John 10, 10. But in Psalm 19, beginning in verse 7 and concluding in verse 9, he says this, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The statues of the Lord are right. There's going to be the right things to do, the right way to go. It's going to rejoice your heart when you follow in righteousness. And the Lord will open up your eyes, and his commandments will help you understand how to live the pure life that God is asking you to live. And for those of us who ask for wisdom, he will give it to us. There's no reason For anyone to not follow after Jesus. The rewards are much greater than I can even speak of. And time will not allow us to hit every one of these. These are just the highlights. You can't outgive God. Erica spoke about that in the opening. Whatever you sacrifice, whatever you give to him, he's going to bring back to you multiplied over and over again. Those who follow God will never be alone. Because he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You know, friends down here will sometimes be hard to find in times of trouble. You know, you go through a rough patch in your life and you might find a few people that you thought were your friends were really just fair weather friends. When you can no longer join with them in the fun activities or supply what it is that they wanted you to supply, then suddenly you're unimportant to them. But Jesus isn't that way. He's there in the good times, the hard times, the fun times, the sorrowful times. He's always there. And it's important to understand who he is. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Everything is under his feet. He owns the cattle and the hills thereof. The person who sticks close to you, closer than a brother, he can really help you. 
but you've got to put yourself in the place to allow him to do so by following after him. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 27, excuse me, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27, what we find in this is a wonderful promise that everything that you do for the Lord will not be in vain. And you'll see in Matthew 16, 27, he says, For the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. We've talked about that a little bit, that those who serve him will receive an inheritance. Here we're seeing that those who follow after Jesus and do his will and are his hands extended and his feet extended and hear his call and answer his call with, here am I, send me, are the ones that when he tries us, we will be found faithful and be rewarded. It's interesting to me that the Lord would even ask me to follow him. I'm sinful, I'm frail, I'm an imperfect individual. I make the same mistakes over and over sometimes, yet God in all of his splendor and holiness chooses to dwell inside of me in the form of the Holy Spirit. We find that in John 14, 26. He loves me unconditionally because Romans 8, 38 and 39 tells us that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And he calls me his own. I am his child. He loves me. He cares for me. And nothing in this world will ever compare to being part of the family of God through faith in Jesus. When you make that decision to follow Jesus, that is the decision that just keeps on giving. It's a gift of eternal salvation. But it also comes with an endless supply of blessings, we're told, in Psalm 68, 19, where he says, daily he loadeth us with benefits. It tells us that there's a guarantee that we could never escape his presence. Psalms 139, 5 through 7 is a beautiful picture of how no matter where we go, he is there. Whether we try to go high or whether we try to go low, whether we are doing the right thing or whether we're doing the wrong thing, God is always there looking and seeking to pull us back into the center of his will. And then in John chapter 14, Verses 1 through 4, we are told that when we make that decision to follow Jesus, that we have a home not made with hands, eternal into the heavens. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. What a promise. Why aren't you? following after Jesus? Why aren't you committed to him? What are you putting between you and him? What could you possibly think is better than a life lived in the center of God's will, underneath the shadow of the Almighty, as we're told in Psalms 91? I want you to think about this last verse as we begin to close. In James chapter 4 and verse 8, he says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I opened with James chapter 4 and verse 10. And in that verse, we talked about having ourselves humbled before God and he would lift us up. I believe that what may be standing between you and the perfect will of God is found in that latter part of James 4, 8, that you're not willing to give up your fleshly desires. You're not willing to purify your hearts and allow God to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What are you willing to give up Jesus and the peace and joy of living in the center of his will, what are you giving that up for? Because I promise you, it will fail you. I promise you, it will only last for a moment whatever joy you think you're getting. 
There is pleasure in sin for a season. The scriptures tells us that. But the end thereof is the destruction. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What are you giving up Jesus for? What means more to you than following his commandments? Why are you not following Jesus and denying yourself and taking up your cross and allowing him to allow you to live the best life possible? You can't imagine what God has for you in this world and the next unless you are in a personal relationship with him, reading his word, trusting in him, praying to him, believing in him, and following after him. My friend, purify your hearts of any wicked and unclean thing. Abandon your spiritual adultery where you've got one foot in and one foot out. And he says, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Cleave to the unchanging, unwavering, mighty hand of God. Today, know in your heart that is your reasonable service to follow Jesus and your greatest reward and your life well lived when you follow Jesus Christ and trust in him completely. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman at the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father. And it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. Happy girl